Hello students, in this class we have discussed about the shell energy balance by the case of viscous heat source. We already discussed the shell energy balance in case of heat conduction with an electrical heat source and heat conduction with a nuclear heat source. Now the third case we will discuss here that heat conduction with a viscous heat source. First of all before doing that we have to just remember the energy balance equation. So energy balance equation states that in case of steady state the rate of energy in and out by convective transport, rate of energy in by and out by molecular transport, rate of work done on system by molecular transport, rate of work done by system by molecular transport, rate of work done on system by external forces plus rate of energy production is equal to zero. Now the case is, is that the heat conduction with a viscous heat source. The here are two figures. First of all, consider the figure number A, which shows that there is a cylindrical curvature in which the inside cylinder is stationary and the outside cylinder is moving with the angular velocity omega. The two surfaces that is, uh, are kept at a temperature T0 and Tb. The distance between the two surfaces is given by small b. The radius of the external surface of the cylinder is given by capital R. B cracked out the cylinder into a rectangular sheet so that the bottom surface is a stationary surface and the upper surface is the outer surface and we found that the bottom surface is maintained at temperature T0 and the outer surface is maintained at temperature Tv. The distance between the two slides is given by small b. For any kind of energy balance or any kind of shell balance we have to consider an elementary section which is denoted as by using by the term delta x. Now we already discussed the thing in the previous slide which is already written in this slide. Now following assumptions we are taking here is that the fluid is incompressible and Newtonian fluid is there. The curvature of the cylinder is neglected because we already converted the cylindrical curvature into a Cartesian coordinates. The temperature of the fluid is a function of R only that is a distance. The gap between B the cylinder is small in comparison to the length and the width. The thermal conductivity is constant and the steady state condition is there. In this we have already discussed that the velocity is a function of distance because the distance travel is taking place and with respect to that one layer is stationary and otherwise is moving. So the velocity is function of a distance which is denoted in a linear manner that Vz upon Vv is equal to x upon V. Now from the above assumptions we now do the energy balance on the in case of shell. So we have to uh, use the term combined energy flux which is denoted by small e. Since the flux is converted to energy by multiplying the cross sectional area, if we go into the figure we found that the cross sectional area which are perpendicular to the direction of the flow and it is denoted by the multiplication of the width and the length. So the energy flux equation is given as W into L EX at the surface X minus e W into L EX at the surface X plus delta X which is equal to 0. In E, B already club the convective term, molecular term, work done and the conduction term. Now the whole equation is divided by a volume that is W L into delta X and limit delta X tends to 0. We get a differential energy equation which is denoted as dEx over dx is equal to 0. On integration the above equation we get Ex is equal to C1 which is an integration constant. The term E includes the convective energy flux, rate of work done by molecular transfer mechanism and rate of transfer by molecular mechanism. In the previous classes we already discussed that the combined energy flux is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy and internal or enthalpy term along with that shear stress multiplied by the V that is denoted as a work done and the heat production which is taking place as a conduction. So the first term that is a convective energy flux that is half rho V square plus rho H cap into V is neglected because the velocity term in the x direction and y direction is zero. In case of second term the x component of the second term is written as that tau dot v is equal to tau xx because it is a shear stress which is a tensor quantity and v is the vector quantity. So we written as the shear stress component in term of 
two two distance uh, two direction sorry and the velocity is respect in term of one direction so tau x s into v x plus tau x y into v y plus tau x z into v z since the velocity x component and y component is zero so the term which left is that tau x z into v z and by newton's law of viscosity we get the term of the shear stress which is equal to minus mu dv z over dx and tau dot v is given as minus mu dv z over dv z over dx v is, is denoted as the velocity z component now the third term q that is the heat flux which is denoted by the fourier's law of heat conduction for x component the flux equation is given by qs is equal to minus k dt over dx now we get the value of qx and tau dot b and put is these two values in equation number 3 we get minus k dt over dx is minus mu dvz into dvz over dx is equal to c1 which is equation number 9 as we already discussed that there is a linear relationship between the velocity so vz upon vv is equal to xyv which is already discussed and along with that if we do the differential equation of that with respect to x we get a vv over v because the velocity is dependent in the x direction by putting these two equation one vz term in this term and dvz over dx term in this equation we get the total combination of these two equations is that minus k dt over dx minus mu vv over v whole square into x is equal to c1 on integrating the temperature profile with respect to x we get the temperature profile with another constant which is known as c2 because it is already present the constant term c1 so now the another integration be providing an another integration constant which is denoted by c2 now the main thing is that the c1 and c2 are unknown to us so to get the value of c1 and c2 we have to use a boundary condition so since two constants are available so we need a two boundary condition first one is at x is equal to 0 t is equal to 0 t not and at x is equal to v t is equal to tv let us discuss in this figure also now in the bottom plate it is found that the surface at x is equal to 0 temperature is t not at t surface x is equal to v the temperature is tv so by using these two boundary conditions we get the value of temperature profile from the first boundary condition we get the value of c2 which is equal to t not by applying this second boundary condition we get the value of tv in term of c1 now from the this equation we get the value of c1 in term of temperature by putting the value of c1 and c2 in equation number 9 sorry in equation number 12 we get the mean temperature profile which is equal to t minus t not is equal to minus mu by k v v over v whole square x square by 2 plus x by v main bracket mu by b v v over b b square upon 2 plus k by b t v minus t not whole bracket close on simplification that that is the temperature profile we already get on simplification we get collect the temperature profile terms in one side and the other terms in the other side so t minus t upon tb minus t not is equal to x by v bracket 1 plus mu by k vv square upon 2 into 1 upon tb minus t not bracket 1 minus xp or further simplification we use an another term that is called brinkman number which is denoted as mu by k vv square upon tb minus t not and from this we get a actual profile of temperature in case of viscous heat dissipation that is t minus t not is equal upon tb minus t not is equal to nbr 1 by 2 x by v bracket 1 minus xp bracket close plus x upon v so this is a temperature profile we get in term of viscous heat dissipation that is a heat generated due to viscous heat now the maximum value of temperature is calculated at temp at the value of xyv is equal to 1 by 2 at this point of value the temperature profile is maximum which is denoted by t max minus t not upon tv minus t not from this it is concluded in this class and with respect to this you do a problem for the same temperature profile in case of a viscous heating problem but using a different boundary condition in the last class we have discussed the boundary condition at x is equal to x0 is equal to t is equal to t not and at x is equal to x v is equal to t is equal to tv but here the boundary condition is denoted as at x is equal to 0 t is equal to t not and and x is equal to b x qx is equal to 0 for this kind of problem generate the temperature profile as well as the maximum temperature profile for the same case this is the reference for your 
book that is the word steward and light food the transport phenomena book thank you